everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. Today I'm going to be doing a March of the Machines draft. I've drafted the format a fair amount at this point, and I can't say I've been winning a ton. It seems like it's been a very hard format for me. I'm not finding the right balance between uh, cheap plays and, you know, ways to win in the late game versus removal for bombs. It's hard because the power level of the format is very high. I have learned a fair amount about some of the cards that I'd really consider to be traps at this point. I don't think any of them are... There's none of the traps in this pack. This rare, I think, is certainly playable in green-white. I don't think it's anything special, though, because... It costs... You have to spend seven mana on it. And then either have an attacker or wait a turn. So it is a very late game card. There are much better seven mana cards than this, I would say, in the set. Invasion of Amonkhet seems pretty powerful to me. I think that's what I'm going to pick here. Streetwise Negotiator is a very good card. It's just it's basically a two mana 3-3 three, three with a bunch of upside because you can use it in a variety of ways. Well, this is kind of nice. Second Invasion of Amonkhet to start the draft. We have a clear direction. Our, our direction is we're going to be attacking Amonkhet. I don't think it performs all that well statistically, but I've had a, I've had a couple of really good red-black sack decks that used Furnace Reigns. The problem is that Furnace Reigns isn't uncommon in the set, so you just can't reliably get a bunch of them. But I, I've had one deck where I think I got two and another deck where I got four and both those decks were quite good. I think it's worth picking Invasion of Amonkhet over Final Flourish here. If I didn't already have a blue-black card I might have, you know, if I just had a, a single black colored card I might have done something different. Ooh, interesting pick here. In terms of raw power, the, the best cards are, are probably these two green cards. I'm not going to pick one, though, because both of the both of these cards, I think, are pretty appealing. Icker Drinker is kind of deceptively good. I'm going to wind up with some Convoke cards in my deck, hopefully, given that I'm playing blue. And I also, I picked two invasions to start so I, I want to have a bunch of cheap creatures in my deck because the invasions are way better if you can play them and already have creatures in play to flip them i think i'm gonna go with thicker drinker there's also um you can get final flourish which you want to just have spare bodies around to sack you can sometimes play i, I don't want, know what the name of the card is it's the reprinted village rights corrupted something that just wants you to have a body you don't care about to sack. You can get this thing, which wants you to have a body you don't care about to sack, which I think is going to be the pick here. This is definitely a better card than Icker Drinker. I haven't been very impressed by Invasion of Kamigawa. It's like a poor man's version of the Protocol Knight. Obviously, you need to be a knight-based deck for the Protocol Knight to actually outperform it, but this is, I think, pretty lackluster. Pretty happy with how this is starting. All right, what do we got here? We have a Convoke card, although this is, I think, worse than the four mana Temporal Convoke card. Inca Runeyes is certainly nothing special. I think I'm just going to go with Phyrexian Gargantua. Also the Alabaster Host Intercessor, but I don't think I want to branch into splashing for a card that... It, this is good, but it, it's not insane. The other thing about the Gargantua is with the Invasion of Amonkhets, I definitely want to have some juicy targets to come back as a 4-4. And if I mill this and then get to flip the Invasion of Amonkhet as a Phyrexian Gargantua, that's pretty nice. Here... Got a choice between the Dismal Backwater, which is certainly nice to have, or Temporal Cleansing. I didn't, I couldn't remember the name of this earlier. I think I want Temporal Cleansing. 
I'm going to want some more cheap creatures to actually make this really good, but I think that a good blue-black deck is going to be a deck that makes this a good card, so I should be shooting for that. This pack offers nothing. It's almost nothing for anybody. This card it, I have not loved. I mean, it's it's filler. It's pretty sad if this is what your turn two is, just making your opponent discard. It's nice that it never goes bad because it, it turns into a just a four mana three three effectively, but I I would like to I would hope to do better than it. This pack again doesn't offer much. I might take the Swiftwater Cliffs just as a because it's early in the draft and maybe I get some reason that I want to have a red card in my deck. These two cards are all three of these cards I think are just straight up filler. They're they make my deck every once in a while, but they are not good. I want Baral. It's nice if I get enough Convoke stuff. I think it is also early enough that I should probably try to do that. Gloomfang Mal Mahler is okay. And it's also, it's, a ni it's nice to have a body I can just put in the yard just in case I need one for Invasion of Amonkhet, but the fact that it's a, a big creature, I guess it, it would come out as a 6-6, six, six, so maybe I should have valued that higher. Maybe I want to play Consuming Aetherborn. The thing about the uh, all the land cycler guys is they're just not high picks, and you don't want to have a lot of them in your deck, so there's not a whole lot of point in going out of your way to get them. This is another hedge pick in case I wind up trying to splash something. These cards I don't want to wind up in my deck. I've never seen anyone put Ven Vengeant Earth in their deck. Oh, I made all those hedge picks. In case I want to splash something and I didn't get I didn't get a green land yet. This is good if you can cast it on curve, but it's not gonna be easy to do. I also don't think I'm all that likely to get other green cards I would want to splash. I think I'm just going to take Final Flourish. I really need to get some flyers of some variety. don't want any of these cards. It's kind of a disappointing pack. I think I'm just going to take Meeting of the Minds. Meeting of Minds. I want some more... Well, I'm, I'm going to be well set up for the Convoke stuff. That's why I took the Baral. That's why I took those Black One Drops. I don't want to have a ton of Meeting of Minds in my deck, but I'm certainly happy with the first copy. Do I want another Icker Drinker? Or do I want an Order of the Mirror? This guy's much better if you have Knight Synergies, which I don't have any at present and don't really plan on getting any. I'm not wild about having Stasis Field in my deck at all. I can play it, but it, it's... I think in a deck that's trying to convoke stuff, I'd rather it just be a creature. Here's a good pick, Halo Forager. I am all about that. It's really nice to just have a three power flyer for damaging these Invasion of Amon Cats. And also, it, this is just a really strong card. I'm going to take Preening Champion over the Nizumi Freewheeler. I think that's a pretty easy pick. The Nizumi Freewheeler is fine, but Preening Champion is a mana cheaper. It's two bodies for Convoking. Just has a lot of good things going on. Oh. This guy is so good. Not in my deck, though. I think I just went Drag Recycler. I think Emery is very hard to use. 
have no artifacts currently. I could play one core, hal core halberd to get back. I'll just take Drag Recycler, another cheap creature. It's a tough balance between how much Convoke stuff you get and how many cheap creatures you want. I think the cheap creatures are kind of the more important part of that, though. I'm definitely going to take Tetsuko. I think Tetsuko's really strong with the stuff I've got going on. Another really good blue-white card. I have one knight at present. Oh, these guys are like stealth knights. I think I'm still going to take the protocol knight. It's really good if I wind up with enough knights for it. Which probably I'm not going to. Do I want animating assimilate essence? Or just a way to splash? I don't think... I wouldn't be excited about playing Assimilate Essence, so I'm going to make the greedy pick. We'll see if we wind up with some white cards. Alright, I feel good about the Protocol Knight pick now, because I've got an, I've got two Order of the Mirrors now. So I think I'm going to play the Protocol Knight. That's three Knights. If I see another Preening Champion in pack three, I'll definitely pick it. Well, maybe not if there's some great rare in the pack, but... I think this is just the best common in the set, so if I'm picking a common, it's going to be a preening champion. I don't know if I want a third acre drinker. It's nice to have the option, I suppose. I'll definitely play self air and Shapecraft. I like having one copy of this in most of my blue decks. It's pretty nice with Icar Drinker. Ooh, this guy. This guy's very good. It's a Siren Pirate. Am I willing to accept a non-knight? Yes, yes I am. Skyclave Aerialist would also be Pretty nice pick, but I'm going to go with the Zephyr Singer, Zephyr Slinger. I have not been very impressed by this Rona. I think it makes blue-black decks most of the time, but it doesn't really do all that much. I'm just going to take the Ether Blade Agent. I have currently three Convoke cards, and I, I think I have a nice low curve in terms of creatures, so I can certainly afford to play more Convoke cards. It'd be nice to pick up maybe a second Temporal Cleansing. I think I'm going to be a 16 land deck. Okay, this is a better Convoke card. I think this should be very playable in my deck. I'm probably going to play 16 lands, just 8-8, eight, eight, but I have a lot of blue creatures. So this will be more like a double blue spell, not really a quad blue spell, because I'll be, I'll be planning to tap two blue creatures, hopefully. I'm really staring at this protocol knight, thinking that I would like one more knight. Six mana is a lot for this, but I do think I would like one more removal spell, and maybe it's just going to be this. This card's perfectly fine. I'm not wild about it in a 16 land, relatively low curve deck, but it'll be one of my, I guess, I'm going to have three expensive-ish spells now. I'm not going to play any more expensive stuff. I guess I could play Skittering Surveyor. Does the, that thing do much for me? Do I have any like random Phyrexians? 
Not really. I'm just going to play Skittering Surveyor, I think. This card, I... <laughs> I think if I could choose to have my opponent cast it, I would generally choose to have them have it in their deck and cast it. It really seems exceptionally bad. I don't remember what set it's from. Maybe if I saw the original artwork, I would... Is this like a Ixalan card, maybe? I don't know. It's really... It's not good. I'll just take the Dismal Backwater. Hmm... I don't think I want another expensive card, so I'm not going to go with the second Gargantua. How good is Oculus Whelp going to be? I think it's pretty good. 3-2 Flyer for 4 is kind of what my deck wants. I've got a couple of ways to get transformed cards. The Invasions, which the Invasions want you to just have Flyers. Ooh, this is a better card, though. What is? I'm not going to play Taysa Karlov. Definitely going to play Invasion of Old Growth, uh, probably over the Oculus Whelp. Not going to play with any of these. So I think my deck is done. I guess I wield this Rona. Should I try to play it over Protocol Knight? It both isn't... Like, it isn't anything special. Even super late in the game, discarding two lands to get a 3-4 back, I guess it's better than playing the two lands, but... It has to be a game where both people are playing with almost nothing for 3-4 to be that exciting. I'm going to bias towards blue mana. I do have all the black one drops. I got the quad blue card. I do have two double black cards. The other thing is, because my one drops are black, I think I would normally want to replace an island with the, the backwater. So if I have draws where I have a one drop and no two drop, I can go turn one swamp, one drop, turn two backwater. But I think just the, the transcendent message is going to be the tiebreaker. I'm going to play more blue than black because of it. I think that's the most important thing. So I, I, I've got more mana pips on blue than black, but that's four of that is the transcendent message. Yeah, I think I think that's the right way to do the lands. What cards am I not playing? The Rona, which as I said, I just In this set, I, I think 4 mana for 4-4 four, four is a pretty... Uh, like, 4 mana for a 4-4, four, four, it's not a bad deal, but it, it that's like on the bubble of making your deck. The cards are so powerful in this set. And I think that this is this is worse than 4 mana for a 4-4, four, four, unless you have a lot of instants and sorceries. And I just don't have a lot of instants and sorceries. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six. It's maybe a little bit more than I thought, and this thing is almost an instant slash sorcery. But I still just I, I don't think it's that good. I think I'd rather have the protocol knight, even if I'm not getting the stun counter. I've got three invasions I want to be attacking, so this might be able to just get a blocker out of the way, and I could get in with some of my cheap stuff. I also have, I have three knights for the protocol knight, so it's not like it's never going to get the stun counter. The other option is the Oculus Whelp. I don't think I have enough stuff that I would want to consider this. I don't think I want a third copy of that. I guess I've, I've got... 
I have a wide assortment of four of four mana cards that are similar, somewhat similar quality. I even have two consuming Aetherborns. I could switch to a Aetherborn vampire theme deck. I think I like the Protocol Knight the best out of these four, but it is pretty close. We'll have to pay attention during the games to see if one of them would have consistently been better than Protocol Knight. You can Zelfir and state craft your opponent, shape craft your opponent's creatures if you just want to cycle it, which if they play something on turn two, I'm definitely doing that. I'm not going to do it before they hit me. Because that would be crazy. This is not ideal that I'm playing the Invasion of Amonkets before I have anything in play. But I think it's better than just damning the Halo for Forager. Hopefully I hit a fourth land and I can just play the Protocol Knight next turn. I like that they didn't play something and give it haste, though. It's because they got that thing. Mm. We're supposed to find a fourth land. This is not a good start. This is really not a good start. Not two spells out of their hand, at least. Come on, fourth land. Still no fourth land. This is just kind of bad luck. I kept two lands, and I've... Is this turn five for me? I think so. I've had four draw steps and I've drawn three extra cards and I've only seen one land. It's one land in seven draws. It's just unfortunate. I'm still not completely out of it. If I draw a fourth land for next turn, I can play Aether Blade Agent and Order of the Mirror. Maybe start getting back into the game. Probably gonna go to nine here. It's possible that they haste the Stormclaw Ravager and then sack the Historian to it, and I go to eight. All right, a little late on the land, but maybe not too late. If I draw a land next turn, I, I can go Halo Forager, Volcanic Spite. I know anything better, not really. It'd probably just be that. Are there any really juicy targets for Invasion of Amonkhet? Not really there. Greening Champion looks like the best card. <laughs> I think they crude this thing so they could sack it. But you can just sack artifacts. It's that, that's what happened, right? They just chose to have this thing be tapped for no reason. 
I mean, I guess having it be tapped, maybe that was the reason. So I can go Halo Forager. The volcanic spite out of their yard on the I think on the trailblazing historian. That's the way to go. Could also do it to an invasion of Amonkhet, but I, I don't think putting that to three is, is worth it. Them having the Trailblazing Historian in play is a little bit scary for me. I'm going to get rid of Transcendent Message there just because I'll be playing Meeting of the Minds on their turn. I don't know that I'm going to have time to also play Transcendent Message. I don't know that I'm going to need to either. They look like they're about running on empty. By merciless repurposing the Stormclaw Ravager and get to start flipping these Invasion of Amonkets, that should be enough to win. Oh no. That guy is a big boy. Kind of scary. attack with the Forager. Oh, they can't block because of the Tetsuko. Makes this way easier. Wow, that Tetsuko was a crazy draw. Took me a second to realize how good it was. Don't think I want any of that stuff. I do want... I think just the Preening Champion. I think it's well, I think it's obviously better than the thing that just gives flying. I want to get rid of this thing. I'm definitely not going to block with the Tetsuko. It's kind of one of the best things I've got going on. Wow. Tetsuko for the win. I've drawn my legends. I've got a wizard and a rogue. Either one of them is a knight, sadly. This is looking a little bit pricey. I do have the Baral to help me with the casting cost a little bit. I'm going to want to block this deep root, deep root Wayfinder, and I think given that I'm short on lands, the Baral is the more important creature. Also, if I just draw, if I draw an island, certainly I'll, I can just attack with Tetsuko on my turn. So if they weren't able to, like, if they didn't have a combat trick to punch through this turn or a removal spell, they're probably not going to have one next turn. Hopefully they don't have the white plus one plus one thing. Even that wouldn't necessarily be that bad. I could just play the Etherblade Agent. All right, now I, I have to play the Etherblade Agent. I'm not going to chump this. It's a, It'll be annoying if they had a land here, but... It's like a 40% chance. They didn't hit a land, but they also left it on top. It's probably a somewhat bad sign. What's this thing do? Just trample.
I'm just digging for a land again. I just want to make my land drop this turn. I'm willing to not have this thing be able to block. Now that I didn't hit my land drop, it doesn't work out very well. It'd be nice to just have a game where I don't have to fight so hard for every land drop. It's not going to be this game, though. So the attack is a 5-4 trample. I think if they attack with both, I'm just going to block the Wayfinder. Hope to draw an island. If I draw an island for my turn, I can go Baral, block the Gore Claws, Statecraft the Baral, trade, take a little bit of trample. Last turn, Mentor, if that card was in this set. Please don't have a way to go crazy with the Monastery Mentor this turn. It would not be conducive to me winning. They have Cosmic Hunger. Guess I'm cycling this. There's no way I'm coming back from this, though. Not even the Printing Champion can save me. Should I keep this hand? No blue mana. I think I should mulligan. I'm ready to fight upon it. I told you I was ready to fight opponent. Four life for me. Oh, we even milled an Icker Drinker. Has anyone ever been this lucky? Yes, people have been that lucky. But it was it was good. That was a good turn. They bricked on a land. I'll take it. Maybe wasted the counter there. Maybe should have just been on the preening champion. Yeah, definitely should have. if I just send everybody at Nation of Amonkhet. I think it goes okay. I don't care if they eat the Acre Drinker or the Scornblade Berserker. I guess they could conceivably eat the goat, but I don't really care that much about that either. drinkers for everybody.
Oh, that thing's a 3-3. Three, three. That maybe wasn't a great attack. It wasn't a horrible attack. I didn't want to... We've had to spend mana on the stupid... 2-1 uh, knight guy to make that attack go better for me. I don't think it matters what land I pick here. I think I'm still in very good shape. Opponent obviously has all spells. Eh, it's kind of annoying that they actually had a good spell there. I do better than Deadly Derision? I don't think so. I, don't, I think Meeting of the Minds is worse than Deadly Derision here. Can really go for drawing that transcend is it transcendent message, whatever the, the four mana or the X X the X blue 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 card is. That would be a good draw. Would also allow me to learn the name of it. Far enough behind that is not very good for them if that's their best turn. Yeah, well, they got a one-two. I'm getting shut down by a one-two. I'm not getting that shut down, but I don't think my elementals are going to attack. I think it's probably time to cash in this thing for a new card. I'll get a point of damage out of it first. Come on, something good. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna deal the damage to them. That actually, I would have attacked differently had I known I was drawing that. So maybe it wasn't worth dealing the one point of damage. What were the cards that would have caused me to behave differently was my second invasion of Amonkhet, this thing, transcendent message. Oh, my second invasion of Amonkhet. Sardi in the yard. So it was like a 1 in 16 versus a point of damage. a game of it, I think. So this is going to be a big preening champion, I assume. Hmm. Suddenly things don't look so good. Maybe this will save me. Still my temporal put it on the top card. Good deal. I no longer have my temporal put it on the top card. They killed temporal temporal cleansing. What are they getting here? It's probably just another preening champion. It is. 
Uh, I'm not going to jump to try to stop that. I have them on a six turn clock from Dreg Recycler. That may have to be good enough. I'm at a high life total. Is that a good draw? I'm going to try to kill him. I think they would have killed Dreg Recycler if they had a final flourish, probably. Maybe not. Assuming this eventually resolves, I am just gonna I'm gonna attack with everything but the drag recycler. If they have a removal spell for Tetsuko, it'll go badly for me. If they have another one of the three mana bounce spells, they can't play it on Tetsuko. They can only play it on one of my attackers, which they'll I think they, they would live if that happens, because they could bounce the Halo Forger, but then I would get to recast the Halo Forger, Halo Forager, and I would probably bounce a Printing Champion, maybe not. I would certainly recast the Halo Forager and find something to do. Oh, they could have countered it, but they would have still died if they'd countered it. Wow. Lucky draw. This is an incredible hand if I draw my third land. I started out in this format drafting a lot of many color decks with Urn of Godfire, Godfire in them. I've been playing best of one and they were not very good in best of one. Oh man, I did not draw my third land. I don't draw a land next turn, it's probably going to be pretty bad because I might not even have, be able to make a play. I did draw a land, so it's pretty good. I don't think I want to trade Printing Champion with the 3 2 this turn. No, I don't think I'm even going to have the option to do it, so I won't act disappointed. Katsuko is so good in this deck. Can I have a land, please? No. No lands for me. And as is almost always the case, Preening Champion is the best thing to turn my, my guy into. Well, there, actually, there's a Wildwood Escort that's better. So, if I just send one thing at this, I get the Wildwood Escort and the Printing Champion, play the Printing Champion, I can, I can afford to send two things at it. I want to be able to cast Meeting of Minds, that's what that, all that talking was about. I can't add the Scorn Blade Berserker because even though that's kind of free to play on a Convoke turn, I'm already spending all my land producing mana. So I don't have any of that to spare. Still a great turn.
I didn't bother playing Meeting of Minds that turn, because I think at this point, actually, I will block the 3-2 Death Touch with Wildwood Escort. I didn't even want to attack. This might mean that I don't get that I've played in such a way that I didn't get to cast Invasion of Ulgrotha. This turn, which, that's a little sad. But I'll get over it. Let's see if we had a Swamp so I can play an Icar Drinker, Icar Drinker in addition to this other stuff. No. Uh, Maybe should have checked the graveyards first to see if there was anything worth getting, but I'm just guessing there's going to be something. There is. 4-4 trample, four, four, trample Hexproof. That's looking pretty good. My graveyard looking pretty bad. Next turn, now I'm going to be able to Invasion of Ulgrotha, the Serpent Blade Warrior. Probably the only way I can lose at this point is if they have a Sweeper. Which they can play the black one. No. Oh. This card, I think it's not going to do enough for them. This card does a lot if you get to the point where you flip it. But they don't have... I don't think that's going to be enough. There's a lot of value, but they're so far behind on board. I don't think it's going to be enough. Out of my way, Serpent Blade Assailant. I think it's worth killing that. Take seven to flip Invasion of Alara, which I definitely don't want them to flip Invasion of Alara, but I. Given what they've got in play and what they only have one unknown card, I don't think they're going to be able to flip it if they don't leave any blockers. <laughs> like every game, wishing I had one more land. these two drops do I care less about trading I think it might be this one also it's possible they play some sort of a one two maybe well if they play a second color of land they could play a one drop and this would be able to attack where this wouldn't it's not on it's, I don't know that there's any two mana one twos that people play in this format the only real argument for playing Order of the Mirror that turn was it might be the difference between having a knight and not having a knight when I get to four mana for the Protocol Knight, in case, obviously when I get to three lands I'm going to play Preening Champion, but if it dies I might not have a knight in play for the Protocol Knight if I don't have the Order of the Mirror in play already. Should be a good turn to draw a land. Not a land, and also not even close. Sometimes this guy's close to a land, but not with my hand, sadly. So next turn will be a good turn to draw a land. That's not a land. My only legal play is to sack something to the Dreg Recycler. I think I'm probably not going to do that. Maybe they'll force me into it, though.
thinking about if I wanted to tap a land instead. I think I don't. Okay. It's not that bad for me. That's maybe nicer if they didn't have that, but could have gone worse. They could have had a counter of some kind. I don't know what... Oh, this one flips into a 4-4 four, four that has Ward 2. It gives other things Ward 2. It's the Ward... It's Ward 2 Tribal Invasion. This turn I'll jump, other than letting that thing flip, if they're willing to attack. Ah. That's probably going to be a problem. I'm going to hit Stasis Field. Yikes. this thing do when it flips? It becomes very bad for me, I know that much. I can protocol knight it though, that's kind of cool. Oh, why didn't I block with this thing? I don't have a good explanation for that. So this is the turn I want to protocol knight this. I think it is. I don't really have a better use for my mana this turn, so let's do it. What am I getting? I'm gonna get their, I don't know the name of it, whatever that blue green card is. That Cascades. Oh, I'm not gonna get the Cascade though, am I? Because that's a cast trigger, not a. ETB trigger. So maybe that's not the right thing to get. I can get Brawl, and then I'm guaranteed to be able to play Merciless repurposing next turn. I think that's the play. Still five cards, five unknowns in their hand. So I'm not out of the woods, but I'm feeling better about how this is going. Really not that bad of a draw. Knows. So you're saying it's all bad for me.
This turns into a 6-6 six, six, that they get a... Th three, 3 green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with reach. Along with life length. Okay. I accept. I think I still need just need to final flourish the Atali. That could have gone better. Now what? I don't even have a land, so I can't consider the merciless repurposing. Maybe if I draw land next turn. I'm almost running I'm starting to run out of deck. I guess they're running on running out of deck a little faster than me. I need these to not be very good cards. Yeah. Icker Drinker. That's a nice whiff. three top. It's not ideal. So when they flip this, they get an 11 11 trample indestructible that deals poison damage. I'm going to say that would probably not be very good for me. Should I do this now or should I wait? It's the benefit of waiting. I think I should do it in their upkeep. If they have the, the six mana convoke counter, they can cast it right now anyway. If I do it in their upkeep, they might have the bounce spell, but they could play the bounce spell right now. Don't like that they're getting, oh, okay, it, it worked, so. There's maybe hope. Oh, I guess that was maybe a reason to do it then, but I think at this point, the way I'm gonna win is probably gonna be to deck them, so I, I don't know that I care that much about that. I'm getting the Sandstalker Moloch value. Now what's the plan? They have eight cards left, they have six cards left, this mills three cards. I th think the plan should just be to play to stall and hope to mill them out. So I'm just going to force them to use a bunch of attack steps when trying to flip their invasions. It's just a 4-4 four, four trample. 
I've used almost every card in my deck that can target things, so I don't know that I need to worry about the warding. Well, wood escort's a little scary. They're getting pulled Lucranos back, okay. Wait, I didn't kill this? I meant to kill this. Instead, I... Killed the thing that can be getting indestructible. This is okay, though. Definitely don't want to add cards to their deck. I could have played my previous turn a little better. I should have traded with a 3-3 instead of the 4-2, and then I could have played Final Flourish. Instead of the Afara's Dispersal, and then I would have also been able to make a 2-2, which would have been nice. Ten three. Thing means business. left. Did I do it? Is it over? It's looking all right. I didn't think about it. I actually come closer to decking myself than I thought. Oh, I, I no, I literally just decked myself. I'm an idiot. I forgot that worked that way. Ugh. If I had not played the Gargantua, could I have lived? I've had two more cards left. Yeah, I think I would have won if I just not played the Gargantua.
This Icar Drinker is going to have a lot of work to do to pound through all this life they're gaining. This is a really nice curve out. I'm going to cleanse the battlefield of their Xerox Strobe Knight. I think whoever named this really, uh, they they didn't give it their all coming up with the name Xerox Strobe Knight. I'm going to get to mill the Xerox Strobe Knight and then probably turn my Invasion of Amonkhet into it. Possibly turn it into it. Things are looking good. Oh, not going to get to turn it into it, probably. Hopefully they don't have the, the forest dispersal. Ooh, thematic barrage. I like it. planning on attacking with the printing champion, but given that I drew a land and I can play Meeting of Minds, as long as I don't attack, I'm not going to. We've got a stun counter incoming. There's three to flip this, so I'm still going to do this. They can flip this thing if they want. It'd be pretty hard for me to stop them anyway. I don't think my opponent's going to be very happy with how this game goes for them from here on out. Unless they do a really good spell this turn. No, the Stoke. Lithomantic Barrage. Lithomantic Barrage is looking pretty tasty. I was thinking I was going to be Merciless Repurposing, but... This is even better. Can't even counter it. I'm gonna assume there's something good enough. Please be something good. The Xerox Knight. Tetsuko. I think I'll go with the Xerox Knight. That game is why I like being the Convoke deck. Draws like that are just, they're, they're almost unbeatable.
turn three printing champion on the play and winning. Those things go together. The only thing this hand is missing is a two drop, but that's what this card's gonna be. It's gonna be Tatsuko or Baral. It was close. I just needed one more guess to get to Order of the Mirror. I wouldn't have guessed that. I can't even remember what its name is, really. I would have guessed uh, Dreg Recycler. Turn three printing champion and winning. I assume they didn't have another land or didn't have a play that turn. Both of those meant they were going to lose. This is the curve that I talked about in deck building when I said that I wanted to have more swamps than islands in case I drew dismal backwater. I didn't wind up playing the, uh, the, the extra swamp to make this more likely, but... I just happened to draw one of my seven swamps. I'm going to go ahead and attack first. Maybe they go crazy and play a removal spell. They didn't. There's no craziness to be had. They're getting priority, which makes me feel like they might have Final Flourish in their hand. I don't know what else they would have had that they wouldn't have played already. Do I want a Transcendent Message for two? It wouldn't be the worst play in the world, honestly. I think I'm going to wait and see what I draw next turn. If I draw something next turn that I don't want to cast, I don't, then I wouldn't have a land. Glad I didn't do it, because this is pretty nice to get to use my two-mana removal spell in the four-drop. All right, that gives me access to a land. Just go and get another island. In case Tetsuko happens to die, I'll still be able to transcend it message. That's a macro sage. It's not your typical sized sage. I'm going to continue to operate under the assumption that waiting is better with this. I tried companioning the Macro Sage in one draft. It really was not a very good idea. Waiting to start till you have three mana wasn't conducive to winning. Swamp, so I could play this Icker Drinker. It's not helping me in, it, in my hand. I really need this Tetsuko to stay alive. It's the only thing between my board being awful and me winning. I like being bold. I'm attacking with, with my 1-1 death touch for a point of damage rather than keeping it back to block a 5-drop. I do have three more points of burn here. I 
And I do have, I am gaining tiny amounts of life. If they attack with both, I'm not even going to block. I won't even chump the five power guy with the Icar Drinker. They probably won't attack with at least the Timberland Ancient because it can block the Preening Champion. spell for Tatsuko. It's kind of annoying, but it wouldn't even be a disaster necessarily. I suspect they've had Final Flourish in their hand for most of this game, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a Final Flourish on the Tatsuko sacking the Serpent Blade, whatever. They didn't have Final Flourish. It's worse for me. So if I had attacked the Preening Champion as well, they would have blocked it with the Timberland Ancient instead. Oh. Right, that actually went kind of bad. Let's find some new cards. Zendikar is being invaded. I don't love it. I think that's a pretty easy block. It costs them a lot to send one of their big guys at the invasion of Zendikar. They might feel like they got me there, but I don't even really think they did. I think that was just... Oops, that's fine. Can I kill them? I go... I get through for one damage. One damage doesn't kill them. They're interested in blocking with the Macro Sage. Yeah. Not surprising. I would have known my deck would be so vulnerable to this giant flying creature. Oh no. That's actually somewhat scary. I think they should have done it on this thing though. I still have lethal. They don't have a way to deal with a flyer. I think I even have lethal if they get a life gain land here. Because I can flip this. Yeah. Just 
need to make sure I do not attack with my ground guy. 79, yeah. It would have been bad if I'd been off by one with the math. And I needed to flip that and I'd gone to combat before doing it. Would they have lived if they had put the counter in the other place? They would have gained two less life, but they would have been able to block a three power guy. So I, I still would have killed them, but I would have needed to flip the, the order of the mirror. Last game, let's see if I get the trophy against a pretty highly ranked opponent, number 28. I'm surprised my, my ranking hasn't gone up more. I think that the, uh, the rankings are bugged. If you fall down to the point where I'm at, where you're in, uh, like you're right on the bubble of the percents, you tend to get paired against people who are not yet mythic. And the, the calculation doesn't actually work right when you're playing mythic versus non-mythic as far as I understand it. So it's, it's really, like, it's pretty hard to get out of this band. Obviously, being number 28 on the ladder, my opponent has been more successful in this limited format than I have. But it is, it, it's, it, if I could actually get him to, like, around... 800, I actually think it'd be easier to get my rank to go up. Please don't have that convoke thing. Ugh. I don't know if this was worth it. We traded two for two, but one of the cards I was trading with was their one two. They had sunk mana in. Do it. Oh no, I can't. I can only play. Can't cast more than one non Phyrexian creature each turn. Non Phyrexian spell. Could still cast this Icker Drinker. Could still get an island. Oh, I'm not going to be able to flip this though because of the sensor so I'll have to not attack the invasion of almond cat this turn or I can do this Give me something good. I know that there's this big haster dude. This guy is not better. You can't. I can't flip to the backside. It would just be a white creature rather than a red creature. Uh, I think Dreg Recycler is my best bet. I've really not liked white red when I've tried it. Maybe I wasn't drafting it right.
I'll take the five. Mm, I'm not going to take ten. This guy is unblockable, but I think he's at a high enough life total that I should chump the 10 when I can. I could have repurposed this and then gotten an attack with this thing, but then they would have moved the core halberd and then cracked back for probably eight. If they have the pro color card, I'm going to be pretty unhappy. I think if they have the pro color card, I want to block first. This is starting to look pretty good. If they didn't, if they didn't have anything they could do there. Seal from existence. Probably gonna seal the Tetsuko. I would think. No. I'm obviously going to kill something this turn. I'm trying to decide which of those two to kill. And I'm also deciding if I want to cycle this away. I think the answer is I don't want to cycle it away. So let's start out by attacking. It's also possible to spend mana on that incubator this turn, but I don't think that was worth it. Guess I'll get the spite out of their graveyard. So that, that one has vigilance. I'm just going to go after the vigilance thing. I thought I was going to go after this guy, because he's a little scarier, because he makes everything hit with... makes the creatures hit with double strike, but I think the vigilance is enough that it's worth going the other way. I have plenty of stuff I can... If I need to switch over to chumping, I can chump that guy for a long time. Oh, this gives Vigilance too. Oh, I should have blocked the other way. That was dumb. Or I should have... killed things the other way. Is this worth doing? What would I be getting? Drag Recycler again? I think this at least is worth doing. I don't think it's worth trying to flip, though. was actually worth trying to flip. They would be at 5, but I would have a 4-4. Four, four. It's nice to have a 4-4. Four, four. I definitely killed the wrong gold creature. I 100% should have killed Rayav.
All right. Some bumps, but I got there. Nice. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to all the people who have recently subbed. I've gotten a bunch of new subs. It's nice. The channel's growing. If you haven't already, please consider subbing. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.